The PC is cool again. Seriously. And I don't just mean Windows devices, but the category as a whole. Devices with a screen, a physical keyboard, and a mouse are making a massive comeback, and I think they have some major, major improvements this year. I'm Martin from TechAltar. This is the 25th episode of the Story Behind series, and let me explain. Here's a rundown of the most important updates to the category in 2017. The first wave of Windows computers running on Qualcomm processors have just been announced. You probably already know Qualcomm as the company that makes processors for smartphones. Most flagship Android phones use Qualcomm chips, and most iPhones use 4G radios from Qualcomm. And those very processors and radios are now coming to PCs as well, promising 20 plus hours of battery life, thinner laptops without the need for fans, constant gigabit LTE connection even when your computer is in sleep mode, turning sleep mode on and off instantly like your phone does, and much, much more. Intel put quad-core processors into Ultrabooks for the first time ever, and many Intel Ultrabooks are now starting to become fanless too, so significantly more power and better thermals. AMD made a massive comeback with Ryzen and Threadripper, putting an end to the monopoly Intel has had over the high-end desktop CPU market. We were promised that Ryzen would arrive to laptops later this year too, and that could potentially bring even more heat to the market. Despite being potent rivals again, Intel and AMD have also announced a partnership. I repeat, an Intel and AMD partnership. They're planning to co-create computer chips that use Intel CPUs and AMD GPUs, all integrated on one chip that would bring serious gaming performance to thin and light laptops. Nvidia continued to create bowler desktop graphics cards, and for the first time ever, also brought a few of them to thin and light laptops too, with their 1050 and 1060 series for example, bringing actual desktop grade graphics to impressively thin devices like the new Microsoft Surface Books. Leaving the Windows universe, Apple finally released upgrades to their MacBook Pro and iMac lines, and even teased an updated Mac Pro after years of nearly completely abandoning all of these categories. Okay, the new MacBook Pros actually first launched at the end of 2016, but whatever, I think they're part of the same wave. And whether you like dongles and, I don't know, touch bars or not, there is a clear renewed interest from Apple to make computers again. Google is also getting increasingly serious about Chrome OS, giving it native Android app support and many offline capabilities, and with that, slowly converting Chrome OS from a niche platform to something more and more people can actually start using. In other words, there are big changes everywhere. Computer operating systems have evolved quite a bit, and suddenly there is real competition for processors again. I mean, in just one year, we went from the firm assumption that computer equals Intel CPU, and if you want more power than also an Nvidia graphics card, back to the wild west again. At each price range, you have multiple options, and all of them are either significantly more powerful or have significantly better battery life than what you could have bought last year. I mean, let me just make up a few crazy statements that you might start hearing from people very soon. My netbook doesn't suck, thanks to Qualcomm chips. My ultrabook can actually edit videos, thanks to quad-core Intel processors. My thin and light laptop can actually game, thanks to Nvidia graphics cards and whatever that Intel AMD Frankenstein processor will be called. I can actually buy a Mac with up-to-date specs. My Chromebook isn't completely useless when I don't have a strong internet connection. And so on. And you can probably tell, but I find these mind-blowing. So what is going on? Where is all this innovation suddenly coming from? Well, it's hard to say, but I think a big chunk of it can actually be attributed to something I'll call a market correction. And let me bring up a parallel example to help you understand the concept. A publicly traded company, let's call it Microsoft, misses their quarterly earnings expectations. News breaks and all the Microsoft investors hear about it. So some of them will think that the stock is now overpriced and they will sell their shares, driving the price of Microsoft stock down. Now, other investors who own stocks too see that the price of their Microsoft stock is going down. Better sell it now than wait until it bottoms out, right? So they sell too. Herd behavior kicks in and people start selling stocks because look, everyone else is selling Microsoft stock, so I should probably sell mine too. And this goes on for a while until stock prices become unreasonably low. 
Clearly, the price change was originally started by a legitimate concern, but it just gets overblown. After a time, the panic dies off, people realize that hmm, actually Macrosoft's quarter wasn't that bad after all, and the current share price is way too low. So they start buying shares again, and the share price normalizes at the valuation which the market deems reasonable. This uptick, uh, the return to a reasonable level, is called a market correction. And I think something similar happened to the PC industry, just on a larger scale. When smartphones came out, they completely sucked the air out of the personal computer industry. Suddenly, smartphones were were growing faster than PCs, and so way fewer companies wanted to invest into computers or processors, operating systems, or programs made for computers. R&D and advertising budgets for PCs were shrinking, meaning that fewer interesting PCs were brought to the market, and those that did weren't marketed as well as they could have been, causing an even bigger decrease in sales. Market forecasts were becoming bleaker and bleaker, and consumers were repeatedly told that they don't need a new computer. Many people agreed that there was no meaningful innovation in PCs left. I mean, we were literally told that we have entered the post-PC era, right? And I mean, we sort of have. Smartphones did take the crown as the most used and sold devices around the world, and that trend still continues. So just like in the case of our Macrosoft stock, the trigger for this change was a legitimate concern. But the reaction of both investors and consumers snowballed into something unreasonable. PCs didn't actually disappear. Far from it. This is my office. It's a really modern company, and it's full of PCs. Nearly everyone I know uses PCs on a regular basis. If anything, we are not in the post-PC era, but in the phone plus PC era. Less catchy, but probably more accurate. And while the PC industry might not be as important as the smartphone industry, it sure as hell still is one of the largest industries around. Market researchers estimate that around 300 million PCs are sold each year, and it's unclear to me if that number even includes PCs built by users themselves. Now, even if we assume a pretty conservative 500 USD average selling price, that is still a $150 billion industry for just the PC hardware alone. Add mice, keyboards, speakers, printers, and more, and that number will rise even more. And let's not forget that until high-end computing happens on PCs, people will continue to actually pay for software there, not on phones. I have two $60 monthly subscriptions for Adobe software to make videos and graphics. One for my daytime job and one for this YouTube channel. $120 a month to a single company. I have two paid Microsoft Office subscriptions for the same reasons. I regularly buy games for my PC for 10, 30, or I don't know, $50 without thinking too much about it, and the list goes on. I would never pay comparable sums of money for phone software in 2017. Look, I'm not saying that PCs are the future and that smartphones were just a fad, or even that there's more money to be made with PCs than with smartphones. That would be stupid. But I do think that the laptop and desktop form factors are here to stay for a while still. And slowly but surely, companies are not only realizing that, but after a long period of relative silence, they're also investing into it again to capture a larger chunk of the market. I think the market is starting to correct itself, and as this increased interest creates new components and new experiences, those could breathe some new life into the industry again, and maybe even drive a bit of growth at some point. I mean, buying a 2018 PC will bring actual, real-life benefits to nearly anyone, be it immense improvements to better life, performance, or mobility. Okay, I hope you found this video interesting and I would really like to know which improvements you are the most excited about. I've created a Twitter poll, which you can find in the description of this video. So go there, cast your vote, and while you're at it, make sure to follow me on my social media channels. I am TechAltar on all of them. If you'd like to see more videos like this one from the Story Behind series, then make sure to subscribe to my channel and watch previous episodes. They're somewhere here on the screen and they're all still relevant. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.